Good morning. Uh, I just did a short video about having a, a little shot of Altissio, and I was going to take the dog out, but not really feeling up to it. Got a little, I don't know, sinus infection thing maybe starting up. Yes, I'm going to go get tested for COVID. Um, <coughs> but I thought, I think I'd like to sit home and just have a nice cup of coffee before I before I start drinking my tea. If you ever wondered, by the way, why these little things are called tea lights. There, can you see that? Now you know. You put it in the stand under the teapot and it keeps the tea warm It really or hot. It really does. Anyhow, so uh, this morning I've got my cool cup with the little see-through pieces in it that I got at TJ Maxx a few years ago and have never been able to find any more. Oh, what is this? It says lace. Oh, I don't want to. I'll probably end up dumping the whole thing all over, but... <laughs> When it's empty later, I'll look and see what it says. But, you know, I searched online and at TJ Maxx and everything. Couldn't find any more of these. Anyhow, so I've heated up the milk that's in here because I've got quite a bit, actually. And... Uh, you can see there's little bits of the coffee that I, the Altissio I had earlier. So I'm going to make the Fortado, which tastes good with milk. And Fortado is my favorite coffee. It's an intensity of eight. And, you know, who likes cocoa? woody, sort of oaky, I don't know, what would you say? Not odors or tastes. I mean, who chews on oak, right? Uh, but notes. <laughs> um, however you interpret notes. Anyhow, it says, here's the most intense Virtuo coffee in its Gran Lungo style. So the Gran Lungo is 5.07 ounces, okay? Uh, Fortado, it's Indian Robusta comes at you in full force and cocoa and oak, oak wood notes emerge from the Columbia Arabica. I have no idea how all this happens, but I do know that coffees that are described as having cocoa or woody notes, um, smoky notes, I tend to really like those. And it's not, it doesn't taste like chocolate or taste like wood <laughs> or wood smoke or anything, but there's something, it's almost like the coffee is somehow thicker in your mouth. Uh, it has a a more full-bodied consistency, whereas the lower-intensity coffees, to me, tend to be thinner. I don't know. That's the only way that I can think of to describe it. Yeah, you know, what are, you guys who um, have compared high-intensity and low-intensity, what do you think? So. Yeah, that little drop in there is left over from the Altissio I had in the cup. And, okay, come on, coffee. So here's the Fortado <coughs> going into that nice heated up milk. It's a lot of milk, so, you know, in order to have a hot cup of coffee, I heated it up first in the microwave. It's oat milk. And it's a lower calorie oat milk. It's a 60 calorie per cup, but it has enough sort of thickness um, and just good feel on your tongue. And you know, you can see through this lovely cup 
almost like a Chinese rice bowl or something. You know, those bowls that have the little things that look like grains of rice, but they're glass. Ah, oh, this looks so yummy to me. So remember, with the crema, some people say, oh, I don't like it. Let it sit for a while and it will dissipate. But better than that is, if you will kind of fold it in, what it does is it adds a, another dimension to the flavor of the coffee. Don't skim it off or anything, golly. One of the reasons that you get an espresso machine to begin with is because of this wonderful crema that's formed as a result of the coffee oils and air being whooshed together as the coffee is made under pressure and the crema itself usually is bitter, so you do want to stir it in. So it adds another dimension to the flavor of the coffee, but it also uh, makes the flavor of the coffee linger longer in your mouth. Now, I don't want my crema to disappear because I love the sort of creamy sensation of it on my tongue. And also even though it may be a little bit bitter, when you drink it, the coffee actually, the coffee actually sort of slips out underneath. So you're getting a little, a little crema with the coffee itself, which of course is mixed with milk in, in the case of how I made it this morning. And uh, I think it's just so special. I really enjoy it. I used to heavily sweeten my coffees, whether it was with sugar in the old days or artificial sweetener in more recent days. And now, I, there's no sweetener or anything in it, just the oat milk, which I feel gives it a little sweetness. But also, um, if you have something sweet to eat with the coffee, oh, the two things together are wonderful. Like I have my little breakfast bar. I'm almost done with it. Oh, heavenly. So even if you have a tiny piece of chocolate with it, take a little nibble with every sip. Mm. Or whatever sweet. Oh my gosh. You just enjoy all the flavors together. I want to say good morning to everyone who's watching. Let's see. There's Laura, Dominique, Rebecca, Christine. Some other people whose names I can't see. I hope you have a wonderful day. <clears throat> See, I'm feeling a little bit better already just talking with y'all. Oh, let's see. So Dominique said, I think the lower intensity is watery. Yes, yes, that, that's what I was trying to say. It's like, it's more like drinking water, whereas the higher intensities are like drinking, I don't know, should I say juice? I mean, it's not that it, like it's, it's not sludgy or anything like that. But I don't know. I mean, give it a try one day. Make a cup of a low intensity, a cup of a high intensity, and sip both without any milk or anything and see how it feels on your tongue. And then if you like the low intensity, dump in the high intensity. That way you won't waste it and it'll modify, modify that um, high intensity for you to sort of bring it down some. And if you don't like the low intensity, dump it into that high intensity and it'll kind of bring it up a little. In other words, it'll make a nice compromise. So, okay, well, I'm going to sit and drink my coffee. And then when I'm done with that, it will be tea time. <laughs>